I'm Lucy and welcome to my channel. For today's video I'm going to be doing a kind of follow up to my audition songs video as I've had a few questions about what monologues I did for my auditions. To be honest, choosing monologues was much harder for me than choosing songs because there were so many songs I liked. I was never stressed about not having anything, but I really struggled with monologues. There weren't many I liked. I found it really hard to find plays that had good monologues in it. So hopefully if you guys are looking for a monologue, this could be helpful and maybe point you in the right direction of where to look. I also know loads of my friends had really good monologues. So if you'd be interested in maybe a whole list of audition monologues and a list of maybe audition songs as well. So not necessarily what I did, but what my friends did, then be sure to give this video a thumbs up to let me know and I'll make sure to do that video. Again, I've got my notebook just like last time and I'm just gonna go through all my feedback from my acting lessons, monologue classes, and just look through what monologues I tried and then what ones I finally chose. So the first thing I have written down is from an acting class where I didn't actually perform, but it just got some suggestions of monologues that I was told to look at. Penelope Skinner, Bunny, Sparks by Simon LeQuinn and John Godber plays. So these were different ones that I was suggested. The first time I actually performed my monologue, I did Iris from a play called Birds. I'd seen someone at my school do this a few years before and I really liked the monologue. The character is a young feisty girl and she basically is frustrated because she fancies this Greek god but he doesn't fancy her back. It's set in the world of Greek gods and she's, I think she's a goddess and yeah, it's a really fun monologue and I really love doing it, it's really funny. However, it was from an American play and for Mount View specifically, you had to have a British play and I wanted to do the same monologue for all my auditions so I felt comfortable and I wasn't switching back and forwards. So unfortunately I had to not do that one. However, I definitely still have it in my folder for other occasions when I don't have to do a British based monologue. Then I also looked into the play Shakers, however, I was advised not to do one from this play. This play has loads of monologues. Like if you're really struggling, it's got hundreds of monologues. Well, no, that's a lie, it's not got hundreds. It's got each character has a separate monologue so you can see which character you relate to the most and they're all female. I was personally advised not to do this because a lot of people do it at drama A level apparently, which meant a lot of people were going into auditions and using it. Again, as with monologues and songs, it's not the end of the world if you do the same monologue as someone else, it's going to happen somewhere. But I personally wanted one that was more individual and that not as many people would know of. So the contemporary monologue that I finally went to was from a play called When I Was a Girl I Used to Scream and Shout and the character was Fiona. This was suggested to me by my head of course to check out this play and it's actually based in Scotland which is where I'm from if you didn't know and I really loved this monologue. It was quite light-hearted but it also had a really beautiful story. I found the character so easy to relate to. I just really loved the flow, how she spoke. I found it really similar to how I would speak which meant it was easier for me to access the character when I was more stressed. This monologue made me really love um, doing contemporary monologues. I used to find them a bit ugh and a bit boring and I just never used to really fully get into them but this monologue really helped me get over that and really feel like I was in the monologue and in the moment. The monologue is basically about this young girl, Fiona, and she goes to the beach and she's praying to God that she's not pregnant. She's trying to convince God that um, she's a good person and tells him all these good things that she's done with her life that means that she shouldn't be pregnant and it's just really quite funny and light-hearted. Um, I actually didn't have anyone else at any of my other auditions do this monologue which I personally liked. Also when it comes to monologues and accents you need to look into the specific school because for some schools they say to do it in your native accent. Now my native accent is technically Glaswegian Scottish However, that's not my accent now because it's gone as I moved abroad. But for some schools, I actually asked if they prefer if I did it in a Scottish accent and a lot of them did. So just kind of when it comes to accents, gauge the school and see what they think. And also you can always offer the panel so they can choose what they'd rather hear. Now for Shakespeare, I was quite set on my choice for Shakespeare. I'd done this Shakespearean monologue before and I really, really liked it. So I wanted to keep it. And it was Helena from A Midsummer Night's Dream. I just love how feisty she is in the way she talks to the two men. She really tells them what she thinks and I just think she is a great character and she's really fun to play with. Um, this monologue is also not that long, which I liked because I often find Shakespearean monologues can be very long. Some schools have a time restriction on monologues, so make sure to check that out when you're choosing your monologue. Another monologue that I actually looked at because I didn't want to just settle for the first Shakespearean monologue I had was from Troilus and Cressida and it was Cressida's monologue that starts hard to seem one but I was one my lord. 
I really enjoyed this monologue. One of my friends did it and I thought it was a really, really nice monologue. Um, yeah, I just knew it wasn't the right one for me. I had to go and get my other book for this one because this has got, I write out all my monologues normally like a hundred times to help me learn them. This has got my Arts Ed list monologue. For Arts Ed, they have a monologue list. I think Central has a monologue list as well for Shakespeare. So re again, remember to double check what you need to take. So from the Arts Ed list, I chose um, Isabella's monologue from Measure for Measure, which starts, Oh, you beast, oh, faithless coward, oh, dishonest wretch. I love this monologue. I thought she was a brilliant character. I like finding strong female characters in Shakespeare because obviously a lot of the time they're just the girl in love and in love with the boy and dependent on them but I like to find the strong characters within his work and I think there is a lot more than people estimate. Again for Art Said it's on a list so there's going to be someone that does the same um, monologue as you. They actually workshopped this with me in the audition which I really enjoyed because I feel like now it's definitely a monologue I want to keep. As you can probably see on my monologue, there is some notes on it. This is a technique that we actually got taught at GSA. It's called actioning of the text. I find this really helpful with Shakespeare just to break down what they're really saying. So basically, I could do another video on how I learn my monologues and stuff. But in short, you split it into the different thought processes. So I just put a line when there's a change of thought. And then you write a I something you statement. So what are you saying? What are you doing to the person that you're talking to? And it really helped give me direction with my Shakespearean monologue and feel where they were going. Because I personally don't like practicing with modern translations because I feel like they don't have the same intention behind them as the real Shakespearean text. So obviously you want to read the modern translation to know what's going on, but I find actually really helpful for knowing how my character is feeling and what their intention is. If you've done work with objectives, actioning is kind of similar to that, but slightly different. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's given you help on monologues, what monologues to choose, or it might've just been interesting to see what monologues I did for my auditions. If you have enjoyed this video and you enjoy audition videos, then be sure to give it a thumbs up to let me know. And don't forget to subscribe down below for audition videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll hopefully see you soon.